Christ and Redeemer Catholic Church in Thibodeau, Louisiana welcomes you to the second Sunday of Advent, December 7th, 2014. The following homily was recorded live as Father Mark Toops invites us into deep questions about our culture and who is it that we are preparing for this Christmas. As always, we welcome you to join us at Christ the Redeemer and experience our family firsthand. Until we see you, let's keep praying for each other. Now, Father Mark. Well, again, good morning. As I had you turn around just a couple seconds ago, I should have had you ask your neighbor if they voted, huh? Don't ask them who they voted for, but just, you know, I should have had you ask them if they actually went out to the polls. I hope you did vote. You know, we talked about it a lot the weekend before and just a lot of encouragement to exercise that right of, and exercise our conscience as we shape the future of our nation. But um, it's just interesting to, to consider how few of us actually turn out to the polls and vote. You know, this statistic from the November primary midterm elections, was only 36% of registered voters voted in that election. And I'm, I'm not quite sure what the statistic was from yesterday. I didn't get a chance to read this morning, but um, I, I can't imagine that it would be anything higher than the high 20s. 36% in the, in the first round of the elections, and, and, and that's just a, that's a low number. 36% of us voted. Wow. You know, as I look at our, our family here at Christ the Redeemer, we are one family, and just like in so many families, there's many generations within one family, and uh, I know that a lot of us here today, the far majority of us are of my generation. I'm 42 years old, and I know a lot of us are in that generation. We're raising kids right now, and you're kind of like in the teeth of being a parent. And uh, But I know that uh, there are many of us here today who are of, uh, of an older generation, and you might remember the 50s, the 1950s very well. And your generation has lots of wisdom and lots to teach us, but just comparing the statistics uh, from, from the generation from the 50s, and, and let's just say my generation. And in the 1950s, 64% of registered voters voted. And today it's only 36%. And you just see how things have changed over, the, over time, huh? You see the numbers just kind of dwindling from one generation to the next. Here's another interesting t- this, the statistic with the, the two generations side by side. Check this out. In the 1950s, 73% of American citizens trusted their elected officials. 73%. Today, 24%. 24% of Americans trust the government process, the, their elected officials. That's an amazing change in the culture, isn't it? It's important for us, I think, to, to track the changes in the culture because it's important for us to ask ourselves where we're going. Here's some other statistics that, that I think um, draw our awareness or, or ask us to ask some questions today about our culture. Uh, only 50% of Americans consider themselves happy. 50% of Americans consider themselves happy. Y'all, that means that half the nation woke up today not happy with where they are in life. Wow. Forty-five percent of American adults believe that their children will have a better life than they are having. That means over half, the majority of parents in our country believe that their kids are going to grow up in a better world. In other words, like where we're going, where are we heading? If, if parents have that type of intuition. Here's a staggering statistic, and I, and I say this for the, for the PG-13 mind here. I ask for your your maturity here. Uh, a couple of years ago, we spent $130 billion on education. $130 billion. That same year, we spent $150 billion, $20 billion more on alcohol, illegal drugs, 
or um, let's just say the sins of the flesh, if you know what I mean, with the internet and TV and what, you know, you can just see all kinds of things out there. I'll let your imagination kind of take it from there. But those industries, if you know what I mean, the the adult industry, um, alcohol, illegal drugs. We spent more on medicating than we did on educating. Yeah, <laughs> things are changing, aren't they? Yeah, we, and we've known that for years, but the question is, where are we heading, huh? Where, where are we, where are we going, y'all? And where are we going in our culture? Last week, I, I stood before you as a father, and I asked for your permission to ask a few questions about our culture, and 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 today I, I stand before you as a father, and. I love you so much that I want to acknowledge that our culture has a lot of influence on us. And I really just have one question for our culture today. That's it. We'll come back to that in just a couple of seconds. You know, it influences us here in the church too. Think about how things are changing. In 1950, 60% of American Catholics went to Mass on Sunday. Today, that statistic is less than 25%. See, the culture actually seeps into the church, too. And, and we begin to think more like um, the culture around us than we do the, the culture of Christ. 16% of Americans do not believe in Jesus Christ. And that's more than double than it was about 20 years ago. Wow. 13 million Americans believe that their salvation is is unimportant. 13 million people, that's a lot of people, woke up this morning and and their philosophy toward life is that once they take their last breath, then that's it. Like there's, there is nothing on the other side. And every five seconds, someone dies without ever hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where are we heading, y'all? Question of for our culture today. But we'll we'll come back to that question in just two seconds. How about Christmas, huh? It's kind of really where I'm I'm heading with this. Let's let's take a look at our culture and Christmas. A third of Americans believe that Christmas is a cultural holiday. Now, this one that really took my my breath away right here. One out of every four American Catholics believe that Christmas is a cultural holiday. Wow. Like, I repent on behalf of all of my brother priests for for letting y'all down. That that one out of every four American Catholics has forgotten about Christ at Christmas. Here's one. 88% of American children um, believe in Santa and only 78% believe in Jesus. That's that's an amazing statistic. More of us believe in the North Pole than we do on Calvary. Almost half of of Americans my age and younger do not see any connection between Jesus and Christmas. That is a staggering statistic. Almost half of Americans my age do not see Jesus as central to Christmas. Wow. Things are changing, huh? (laughs) Just, uh, I don't know where we're heading, y'all. So I do have a question for our culture, and that is, do we really feel like we need Jesus this Christmas? Or or more yet, like what Jesus do we need? You know, there's that, there's the little bitty baby, and we'll see the baby on the, the cards, and we've got songs about the baby, and 
nativity scenes about the baby, but I have a question about whether we need a savior instead of a baby. Does our culture want a baby or does it want a savior? Like, y'all, where, where are we heading? You know, we have, at, 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 on one hand, we have more children believing in Santa than we do in Jesus, but on the, on the same hand, more parents believe that the world that they're giving their kids is not going to be as good as the one they grew up in. And that, to me, doesn't make sense. I just I'm trying to wrap my mind around that. On one hand, 13 million Americans don't believe that salvation is relevant to their life. And on the same hand, half of American adults woke up today unhappy. Like I'm trying to wrap my mind around that. We spent more on alcohol, illegal drugs, and the adult industry than we did on education Yet at this time of year, nobody questions why our culture doesn't see Jesus as central to Christmas. My question for us today is, does our culture want a baby or a savior? My question is, is our culture happy? What about you? Are, you? are you happy? Are you happy with the way things are going in the world? Or are you happy with where our culture's taking you and your family? Or are, are you happy at this stage of your life? Same question for all of us. Do, like, do we need a baby? Or do we need a savior this Christmas? See, here, here's what I think has kind of inched into like our, our cultural mindset. I think it has a lot to do with independence and provision. And um, just let me share these two things with you. And I want you to maybe see if you can track with me just for a second, okay? You know, we have a nation that's, that's founded on independence. We have a nation that's, that takes great pride in freedom. You know, founded in the early... 17th century, you know, Plymouth Rock, religious freedom, you know, the Declaration of Independence, 1776, and we the people believe that we are free. And, 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 you know, a sweeping story here, but I think what happened was for such a long time in our nation, freedom or independence was seen as a we thing. You know, and, and the heroic lives of millions of our Americans who defended our nation in World War One and World War Two, so that we could be free. And and then you look at our, what happens in our culture in the 60s and 70s, and you know, y'all wonder if if independence got warped in the 60s and 70s from a we thing to a me thing, where independence perhaps was was then looked at as a personal thing like so I am free now to to do what I want and when I want and how I want and whatever I want and that 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 real warped postmodern very self centered type of understanding of freedom has really I think uh, sunk in its teeth in our culture and so now when we look at freedom Freedom isn't something that we collectively share together, but freedom is something that I champion my life on for myself. And if that's the case, then it should be no surprise that a culture that looks at freedom through the lens of I can do anything that I want to do probably doesn't need a savior, probably doesn't want a savior, probably likes Santa more than Jesus. Because Santa can give me the toys that I want to play with to make myself happy. But man, that Savior, he might, he might challenge my sense of being able to do whatever I want to do. And I think that one of the things that has set its teeth in our culture 
is, is a warped sense of freedom and independence. And that very much handcuffs us when it comes to embracing a Savior at Christmas. And I think the other thing has to do with provision. You know, I think that um, one of the things that's going to be birthed out of a mindset of independence or self-sufficiency is a philosophy that I provide for myself. And one of the things that I think drives our culture so compulsively, almost with a frenzy at this time of year, is this incessant need for more, which I think kind of taps into our, you know, self-sufficiency. So I'm going to provide more for myself so I can get more for myself. And I think a lot of us chase that kind of treadmill because we think that the more is going to make us happy. When in reality, I think if you just look at where the culture's going and the statistics that are there, our nation has never been busier. Our, our culture has never been more compulsive. Our culture has never been more focused on providing for itself. But half of our country is unhappy. Does our culture want a baby or a savior? And if we, you know, I say this, I have to repent myself. I have to acknowledge very humbly before you today that, that I've been influenced by that independent freedom, I can do whatever I want mindset too. It's in me. And I've certainly been very much shaped and formed in the mindset of I'm going to provide for myself. Like I stand before you today as a father unashamed to repent for the way that those two things have shaped my life. But I love you enough to lift up the mirror and ask us to admit today as a family if that shaped all of our lives, huh? How many of us, if we're honest with ourselves, looking in the mirror here, when we look at freedom, we look at it as, as something that gives me the freedom to do what I want to do. How many of us think that? And how many of us look, look at provision through the lens of, I need to provide for me? Because, y'all, both of those things will threaten our capacity to receive a savior at Christmas. And I think that's why our culture is much more comfortable with baby Jesus in the arms of Bethlehem than the savior Jesus on the cross in Jerusalem. You know, and last week I said that like this Christmas could be the best Christmas of our life. And to a culture where half of the people in it are unhappy, I just ask us today, like, do you want this to be the best Christmas of your life? Well, what would your life look like if you were happy? What would your life look like if you were confident that your kids would be growing up in a better world? What would your life look like if you were confident that you had direction? Like this Christmas, would you want that gift given to you? Are you interested in that? Because, yeah, this can be the best Christmas ever. But we got to know who we're preparing for. You know, last week I reminded us that how we prepare in Advent is determined by who we're preparing for. And if our culture is preparing for a baby, then of course that's going to drive the way that we look at Advent. But y'all, if we're preparing for a savior, then that is going to very much influence how we prepare. Are you happy? And do you need a savior this Christmas?
I invite you to look up here with me just for a second and just look at this huge banner of the Blessed Mother. I think that's the beauty of sacred art. You know, she she almost silences you as you walk in. It was great watching so many of you walk in today just to see a 30-foot banner with the Blessed Mother pregnant. And uh, she's beautiful, isn't she, huh? Mary knew who she was preparing for, and it was a Savior. John the Baptist in today's gospel, like he knew who he, who he was preparing for, and it, was, it wasn't a baby, it was a Savior. Would you look at Mary right now? Boy, she, she looks so content, doesn't she, as she's up there. She's an extreme physical challenge, you know. She's eight and a half months pregnant. She's on the donkey. She's in the desert. But regardless of the external circumstances of her life, she just looks happy. What would that look like in your life? Would you like to be happy? Because what we need this Christmas is the Savior, if that's going to happen, y'all. How about we pray together right now? Heavenly Father, we love you, and we uh, just thank you for this morning as a parish family to ask questions about our culture and questions about you and knowing how much you love us. Just pray for every one of us here who's searching today that we might have the courage to ask for a Savior. Pray for um, our, our families, our children, Lord, that you would bless them. Give us wisdom. Help us this, this Christmas to have the best Christmas ever. Lord, we lift up our hearts to you with a desire for more out of life. And we acknowledge that us together now as a family that we need you, Emmanuel, God with us. We need you with us in our marriages. We need you with us in our families. Lord, we need you in our nation more than ever. On behalf of every person in our, our nation, Lord, we ask that we'd be a nation under God again and that we would bend our hearts and our minds to you as our Savior. As we prepare in these next two and a half weeks for Christmas, Lord, we ask that you would bless us that this Christmas our lives would be changed by the Savior. And we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you.